Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. From Brooklyn, New York. One mic. 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 I got you. I got you. Welcome to the Only One Mic Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Gerard. Tashi B is back in the building. Yes, How you I doing, am. Tash? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just resting these swollen feet of mine. Oh, wow. Eating, eating too much outside food. Well, there you go. Heavy show today, Tash. Oh, sure. Heavy show today. We got to talk about this little Nas X mm. fiasco. Um, just purely disgusting. Disgusting. And uh, who, who do you got, Tash? What's this guy's Wait name? Again. Derek ja- Jackson? Oh, Derek Jackson, um, who I never heard about until this whole thing last week. I never knew about him. Same. I was never really paying attention to that whole situation. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just a dog barking. He's all right. The, um, internet, be, the internet be putting me on. <laughs> yeah, because they, apparently he was like a big, I guess, what, relationship expert or something like that? Or yeah, is? They, got a lot, they got a lot of them out there. It's funny how people can always tell you how to live. Ain't that something? Yeah, listen, this is a good looking man. I ain't going to front. It's kind of like when, when Steve, like, you know, I was going oh, on Steve Harvey. Wow. Stop it. I go, <laughs> <laughs> I go in on Steve Harvey about that. It's like, you know, think like a man and all that jazz. Like Because people eat it up. Women eat that stuff he's up. He's been married like what, three times? Women eat that stuff up. Allegedly treated as a. The first one, Marjorie, yeah. or something like that. Something, I, don't, I don't know their names. Her name, you know. I think her name was similar. I remember, I think he was on the Arsenio Hall show years ago and brought her on the show with him. Beautiful black woman. I said that but, he um, kicked out the crib or something like that when she was pregnant. Is that the same probably, one? Probably. Uh, no. You know. so, listen, a lot of these men be trifling in the beginning. And then they get that chick that ain't wrapped too tight, but they love them because they ain't wrapped too tight. They calm their asses down. Well... <laughs> That's that's something in itself. <laughs> something in itself, for real. You no, know, you got stuff, do You know, they be trying to mentally and physically abuse women. They come across that woman done, that done been through it all. And it's like, she'd be like, go ahead. One time. Just put your hands on me one time. Mm. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like how I have y'all growing up. You know? Well, I didn't put my hands on you. What are you talking about? No, what I'm saying <laughs> is like, you know, if I dated somebody, I'd be like, yo, you want to come on the block, meet my brothers? Mm. <laughs> so they met. All of y'all, everybody. Yeah. So that's what they knew. Oh, she got a lot of guys on her block. I sure do. Yeah, and we're not I gonna sure play do. with you. You darn right. Yeah. So you know, I think uh, I think with Steve Harvey, he just found the right one. Yeah, and then it's with mature. It's with maturity. It's with so maturity, it's with maturity, man. It's with maturity. Get older. So I mean, where where you want to go with this? You want to? Because I mean, I have so many thoughts and feelings about this kid. This this little Nas X kid, man. In fact, let's just go straight into that, and okay. I'm I'm just gonna get you, you know, just hit you with a question and hit the. Well, public. first, I didn't watch the video. No, and I'm not going to watch. Listen, it. I and as you shouldn't, but um, for the purpose of this, I I saw clips of it. It's disgusting. It's it's just on so many levels, and it makes me wonder how much is this generation willing to do to actually get ahead. Mm. You know, like, where's the integrity? Where's the spirituality? Where's these things at? How much of your soul are you willing to sell to get ahead? So let me ask you this question. Yeah. Based off of what you're saying, Mm -hmm. how do we not know that stuff like this has really been going on for centuries, but due to technology and social media, now we're seeing and we're hearing more about it. Well, that's the thing. It's more flagrant now. I mean, mm-hmm. to the point and see, when I look at things like this, you know, I believe in God. I'm not afraid to say that. Right. Me too. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, you know, and I see this stuff for what it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you and I both know that the devil is just having free range. Oh, yes. Especially in these kids today. Mm-hmm. And um, they don't see anything wrong with it. That's why I always say it's important to have some type of, you know, f- spiritual footing in your home. I and your upbringing, true. you know, instilling mm-hmm. in these kids. So you don't see things like this. And you got to figure, what is this kid, 19, 21, something like that? He's a young kid. Yeah. And so from my understanding, they said that he made the song out of the logic that I guess he's a homosexual and they claim that he's going to go. Well, not claim, but, you know, if you want to go mm-hmm. Bible, that he's going to hell for this. 
And um, he mm. said since he's going to hell, well, I guess he's doing it with a smile on his face, which is horrible. You know, now the thing is, is that this is your lifestyle. This is what you do. But why mm-hmm. sell it to the public? Especially like this, you know, it's just like everybody has their thing or whatever they're into. It's not my job to sell it to the public. It's not my job to give it to the kids because who's consuming his stuff is basically kids, you know, from mm-hmm. this whole old town road thing and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're actually the ones that's the biggest consumers of this stuff. So when a kid sees these videos, and I know you didn't watch it, but like when I tell you it's blasphemous, it's like the most blasphemous thing I've seen in a while. And um, I'm just disgusted by it. I'm just disgusted by the way that the whole thing is done. And we're not even going to get into the Nike thing just yet. We're going to we're going to no, ease into that. I, but... I do want to ask you something. I, I want to ask you something. Yeah, and I want you to be I want you to be transparent with this. Let's do it. Remember when we were younger. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody, I want to let y'all know, you know, once again, you know, me and Mike, you know, only one Mike. We've known each other all our lives, lived on the same block. Mm-hmm. So Mike and I's favorite interest was these silly ass cartoons. Mm hmm. Mike, do you remember South Park? Yes. Okay. Now, here's my question. We were in our early 20s when we watched that. Late teens, early 20s. Mm-hmm. We thought it was funny when Satan was in a relationship and crying and carrying on. Now, I got to stop you right there. Okay. All right. Full transparency. That's when I topped out. That's when I topped out. Because what happens is it was, it's just like anything. It'll mm-hmm. get you to a certain point. Mm-hmm. All right, this is funny. It's silly. Da, da, da. But when they got to that point, it's just the spirit in me that says, no, I can't. I can't. So and I, I, so I, haven't really then. I haven't watched right. it ever since then. I haven't watched it ever since then. I agree. Once I, I see that, I top out, you know, okay. so. And that's just not just with South Park. That's with anything that just irks my spirit. Like, no, I got to tap out of it. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just not, it's not for me. So, um, that's why, like, when I look at it, like, even, like, when you see a lot of TV shows and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like, they have, it, it just threw me through a loop that they got a, a show called Lucifer. Like, that's, it just threw me completely right. through a loop. And I find, with, with him having an actual relationship. It, it's crazy. And, I mean, I've never watched the show. The, the name turned me off. I said, I don't understand. But I do know, like, the fact that the show, I believe, had got canceled from the station I was on. And the people, FOX, Fox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said FOX. <laughs> it's Fox. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for spelling it. But <laughs> the show topped out at Fox, I reckon. And so the people rallied so hard to get this show back on TV that they forced it pretty much on Netflix. And so the show yeah, ended up picking Netflix. up on Netflix or whatever. And it, it's like, so, you know, like I guess a popular show amongst some people. And it just goes to show you that this is where we're at right now. Um, I, I'm going to always say we've always been there. Yeah, I mean, we have. We have. We've always been there. I just think, like you said, it's more flagrant now because of technology. Yeah. Um, with little Nas X, the thing with him is that, and there's so many ways to look at this. One way is... Maybe he doesn't really want to be like that, but that's what the record company is making him do. We know that for a fact that that type and, of And I've actually happens. heard people kind of make the argument from when he first, you know, came out the closet. I'm going to be honest with you. And that's he, what happens is that... He was kind of, he was respectful with it. And then, right. I don't know. They said, well, when he first came out, I heard a few people say, you know what, he probably just doing this for the bread, man. Like, that's a whole other lane. And some people, some people do that to get money. You know what I mean? But when you become the character that you portray, like I say, when I see what I see in there, and now, you know, I described it for you. I know you're not watching it. You know, Mm-mm. listen, I'm, I'm breaking code on stuff like this because it's like these kids watch this stuff. So but I can be able to thing. tell you that that why, why that's wrong. You right. Know? And, 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 and it's like you said, you have to start with the foundation at home. Whatever people believe and do in their home is, is whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. So I know for my home. You figure, you know, I raised my children like that because that's how I was raised. Right. But I, but I've also noticed that even when they went to school, now they're underneath those other students, you know, influence. So now you have to say to them, listen, this is what's out there. However, you know what is right and you know what is wrong. And you know that if you see something like that, it should affect you. And you know, that's not for me. 
Yeah. And that's how we have to do it with our kids because we really can't hold them back from what they're seeing. Like my sons weren't into YouTube and Five Nights at Freddy until they were going went to school. Another student was on that showing them. Matter of fact, right. they went to a Christian school. Mm. And it was in the Christian school, the kid, they have their laptops. They the ones that showed them about Five Nights at Freddy. My sons didn't know about that. Right. So you, you we can control so much, but we just have to make sure we stay on top of them and say, listen. You know what's in the Bible. You know what God says. You know what, you know, your pastor talks about. And you read it for yourself. You have Because you have to read the word on your own. Right. You can't just only go by what the pastor is telling you. They're supposed to speak through God. But, you know, lately, a lot of our uh, Christian leaders are, have been disappointing, been disappointing us. But that's another topic. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to know for yourself and read for yourself and let it work through you. So in regards to little Nas... My thing is, A, okay, he could be doing it because he's rallying some interest and wants attention. He even did something where he was saying he wanted um, a little, you know, somebody for Valentine's weekend. And I remember, what's his name? is Bobby Lights from uh, Love and Hip Hop in Mi- Miami mm-hmm. was interested in like, you know, let, like call me. I'll come through and spend Valentine's weekend and with you. This is the thing, man. This is the but thing. But nobody else does that. Now, you Who know what? This that? was actually going to be a part of another show, but now that we're here, we're here. Mm-mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we go. We, let's go with it. All right. So, the whole thing with what little mama was talking about that? Am I saying the yes. name correct? All right. And she was saying basically that she wanted to start like a heterosexual movement, I guess. I'm down with her. I feel it. Now, the reason why I say that is this. And even like Dave Chappelle said, man. The LBGTQ community has become a bunch of bullies, man. You know what I mean? Whereas like, for instance, they can have that conversation openly and say, well, you know, I'm looking for somebody, but, you know, but you couldn't do that. Because the minute that you do it or you say something or whatever now, these days as a heterosexual man or whatever, is that now we're subject to the Me Too thing. I think that's the new new (laughs) era. That's the new era because the old era of, you know, and and at that time it was called gays and lesbians. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all these letters. The old era ain't down with what's going on with the new era. The old era had a little bit more respect and class, even though they had to hide. But some of them didn't hide, but they just did it respectfully. How many times have we been on the block and we known that Mr. So-and-so, that's his husband or whatever, or Mrs. So-and-so, that's her, her wife. But did they walk up and down the street and carry well, on? Well, it was a certain point in time where respect. in the closet was in the closet. I mean, and what it is, is that your thing is not out for public consumption. It's just like if you like something weird, mm-hmm. you know, um, and your sexual preference or whatever the case is do you go around and advertise this no it's supposed to be private that's your private thing it was private right Right. so it's like you know um now you see it where it's like if you don't accept it that you know you have no love right that's another thing you have to look at is the usage of the term love because if you say you don't you're not with this thing they claim that you don't have love and that's not the truth it's not the truth it's not the truth a lot of us have family members who identify with that but still love that family member. Like I have a relative who I love her dearly, love her dearly, but she identifies as queer. And I've told her, I say, Hey, listen, you know, if you come to visit me, you know, you and your wife, y'all can't stay in my house. Can't be spending night in my house. Cause I, I don't need, think I need to explain to my sons why two women sleeping in the bed. But yeah, but see in the very act of that, it's like, well, you may be able to explain that to your relative. And, you know, sorry, well, I know she still mm-hmm. loves me or whatever the case is. But, you know, I couldn't openly say, well, I would, but I, you know, it's not socially acceptable, I should say, for me to openly say that. Because a lot of people associate that with, well, you don't love me. No, I don't love the deed. I can love right. a person. I can love and a I person. have to love people, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, in order to make it. But I don't love the deed. So, like, you say you have your relative, right? Mm-hmm. Let's flip it like this. Mm-hmm. We have relatives who are drug addicts, mm. who smoke and crack, was, who did and heroin, stealing, stealing, stealing. <laughs> stealing, did all type of debauchery to get drugs and things like that. I love you. I don't love your crack smoking. 
That's right. it. So crack smoking is the you D. Can't come in my house. It's the D. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so don't say, well, well, if you don't love me. I'll meet you outside. Right. If you love me, then you'll love my crack and everything else. No. 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 So that's what I think it is. A lot of times people don't separate deeds and love. Deeds and, and the person, I should say. So if you if I'm saying I don't I don't dig your deeds, I don't I don't like what you're doing. I can't relate to you on that level. This is something I don't like. All right. Not to say that I don't love the person. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the whole LBGTQ community has gotten crazy with this stuff because they think that you're a hateful person for not liking your deed. No, like I can sit here and tell you that I don't like flamboyant gay um, black men. Mm. I don't think you should be all up, you know, high pitch voice higher than me and then swinging your backside and stuff like that and being all, you know, uh, you know, like out there with it and just carrying on. I don't think it should be like that. I think if you're going to be a, a gay black man and be a nice, you know, gay black black man. Well, I don't want to know. I mean, right. And I don't want to know. I don't, I don't, I don't see why, you know, I'm still trying to get over this new thing where I, I don't know what they are, what it is, but where they have a full, you see how you have a mustache, mm-hmm. got a full mustache, just like yours. Mm hmm but got on a wig and and nails and stuff. So which one is it? Are you still a guy? Or are you still, most of them cleaning up their face. Mm. But what about the ones? You see, what's that right there? The goatee you got and the mustache. Mm. Okay, so you have them who look just like how you have all that hair on your face, but dolled up like a woman. Weird. So which one is it? Which one is it? It's a weird thing, but, and it goes back to what, you know, we were saying about this whole little Nas X situation. How much are we willing to accept? Remember we said this back in the beginning of the year. We did a show about the same thing. Not the same topic, but just the question. How much are you willing to accept as we move forward? Now, Listen, as long as you live in on earth, you either accept stuff or you don't, or you just find your way around. I mean, and I'm, I'm just being truthful. It's going to get worse. This is not the, this is not the, sure the tip is. of the iceberg that we've seen. But it's just like even looking at stuff like this. We may have our feelings, but there's a vast majority that supports this garbage. You know, there's a vast majority that doesn't. Now, for instance, they was talking about the situation with the uh, Nike sneaker, where he made the you know the Nike sneaker with the pentagram on it and said like it's like a drop of human blood in it, and he called it the night that the Nike Satan's or Air Satan's or something crazy like that, right? So of course Nike sent out an email that said that they you know didn't sign off on this. This is something that he just took a pair of Air Force Ones and had somebody customize them. He probably did. You know, because people, from what I was reading on, you know, like my daughter goes on these, you know, uh, shade room and all that stuff like that. And, um, which is pretty good reporting, to be quite honest with you, because they tell you about stuff you didn't know. So, I, cause I wouldn't even pay attention about this until she sent it from a shade room. So, um, a lot of people, when I was reading the comments, were saying like, "Look, we got to cancel this kid. We got to, we got to stop this." Which shows you that there are some people that is a vast good majority. You can be look. You everybody commits sin all the time. We all do. But there's a good amount of people who are actual sinners. <laughs> you know what I mean? An act of just committing sin and then being a habitual sinner is something that's you know. These are a lot of people who are habitual sinners that are just telling you like, "Yo, we got to stop this." So obviously there's a vast majority of people out here who don't support this garbage. No, and then and then let's let's not forget the other part. Mm. He's black. So that is Facts. another slap in your face. Facts. They're gonna be you went up there that high? Okay, so we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring you right back down because we can't allow you to get we we we'll leave that to the Jeffree Stars and the whatever the, the case may be. But you black, so you're not gonna be able to be up there like that. Mm-hmm. And anybody can customize a pair of Nikes because look, Rockefeller did it, Wu Tang did it. You understand what I'm saying? So those were signed off. Mm-hmm. Or you can put some other little whatever you want to do, you pay the money. But when it comes to something like that, where the majority of people, it's 50 50 in the world. Some people do worship, some people do, don't, whatever. It's like, no, nah, you can't be doing that because, number one, we didn't sign off on it. So you're taking it upon yourself to show that you're big and you're bad. And that one song you did is going to really take you far. But let's, let's show you how fast we can bring you back down. Because, you know, Little Nas can be a big household name today. 
mm-hmm. and be a no. Well, they're talking about suing them. Tomorrow. Nike is actually talking about suing them, well, as they should. As they should. If you didn't yeah. sign off on it, because I'll be honest with you, when I saw the sneaker and everything, I was so riled up. I was like, man, if Nike put this out, I would never buy another Nike product again. I agree with you. Never. And, I, you know, I was actually about to start campaigning that on Instagram. Like, if he put this out, don't buy another Nike product again. Yeah. Reebok <laughs> is coming back out. Reebok and Puma got some nice stuff. I would rather, <laughs> go, I would rather go to Walmart and get a pair of Bobos than the support. And don't get <laughs> me don't get me wrong. You know, listen, everybody who who put these things out, sneakers, clothes, whatever, they're not all made by godly people. They're not they aren't all made by God fearing people. So, you know, sinners are always gonna have their hands in everything, and that's just a fact. But mm-hmm. it's like I was discussing with my brother, it's when it's so flagrant. You know, right. and why am I strengthening the hand of an evildoer flagrantly? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like everybody's going to do what they do. But if I know that this is where you at with it. So I'm glad that they actually made the statement to say, like, we don't support it or whatever, because he was about to ruin business. Even if they did do a, it. A whole lot of business. Yeah. You even don't if understand they did... other people who got this stuff on it. Yeah. You think Wu-Tang want to know that they got sneakers with Nike and Nike's doing business with somebody like that and Wu-Tang don't get down like that? They, they the, Even if somebody was hidden, they the manly man yeah. at Wu-Tang and Rockefeller. It's just now a fact. Know. Like, Listen, man, you, you got to... And even I call on the old heads on this one. The old heads got to start regulating this stuff because he's not the only one. You know, like, he he's, he's doing weird garbage. What was it? Just maybe a couple of weeks ago, you got the one kid putting a diamond in his head. Um... Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Uzi yeah, Bird. yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to, that's the same when I used to wear pocketbooks. Right. You know, like you got these girlfriends. Yeah, they got these people who are walking around doing this stuff. And it's like the old has the same. You know, I've heard a few old has say, like, listen, this is their generation of music. We can't hate on them. It's not hating. It's regulated. You got to regulate this stuff because just how in our generation where you had, you know, the rock hymns and everybody of that caliber, you know, the poor righteous teachers and all like a lot of people actually went and studied and did things like, you know, read books and th- and whatever influenced your belief system or whatever at that particular time, it came from something that influenced your belief system. Mm-hmm. So now you got kids like this and like countless others of this generation who go out here and they do this and they don't realize that they're influencing a whole other generation. Maybe it's not the kids that's in their twenties. I've, I've seen kids that's in elementary school that had flagrantly said, well, hey, I sold my soul to the devil. And you got to check them. Like, oh, whoa, what are you talking about? But you know what? At the end of the day, how since we we are, you know, we, we Christians, we believe in God. And, and, and we may have we may say things that are whatever, but we have a firm belief system. At the end of the day. They have to deal with that on their own. You can't he can't do what he's doing and live righteous or be okay after that unless he's willing to make a change and turn for himself better he could have still been out there nice and and happy and gay but he didn't have to do a video like that and maybe he's rebelling maybe so many people have come against him and said certain things and he's just like to the point where he doesn't care because to me where's his parents does he have any parents i I don't i don't know all the ins and outs about it but I was I was told I didn't actually read it for myself, but you know I invite everybody who's listening to research it yourself. He said that um, allegedly said that um, he was doing that because he's rebelling. Remember that's what I said at the height of the conversation. Yeah, he's rebelling. But I mean, how far does your rebellion? You're not rebelling. Understand this. I'm, I'm gonna stop you real quick. When actions like that are done, you're not rebelling against the people. You're rebelling against your creator. That's something different. Well, I mean, he's rebelling against himself. He's mm-hmm. the one that's going to dig his own hole. You understand what I'm saying? When we have, you're an educator, I'm an educator. When we have students that rebel, they're normally fighting against something. They are angry at someone or, or, or whatever situation may be. And when I saw that, when I read it actually about him, mm-hmm. with it, um, I said, he's rebelling. He's rebelling. But who he's rebelling against probably either don't give two rats behind or they probably going to stand from what they said, where is 
You are going to go to hell. You weren't raised like this. This is not how we had you in this family. And so that's his way of saying, you know what? What's the hell with y'all? I'm making all this money and I'm going to do this video just to make y'all even more mad when he really doesn't want to do that. I I blame the industry. I blame everything. Tasha, who signs off on this stuff? People who saw, making the money. You who know signs off? Of, who told him this was good? The director, Somebody. anybody who came up with the storyline. Well, who who told you all, this? It ain't nothing to make a storyboard. And as long as they pay in the money, and they give the idea, you know how it is, Mike. Listen, I, I, let's not let's not sit here and act like we don't know how the industry don't get down. I know, I know, and this is why I pulled out. You know, I know, mm-hmm. I know how it gets down. So when we had the opportunity to be, out, I pulled out. It just bother me it's a lot it's, it's a lot so um when you look at these things it's like even like when you look at like a lot of these rappers getting young especially for this generation it seems like a rapper gets killed every couple of days or so you know i never heard of half of these rappers. never heard of them but i mean amongst you know their peers and amongst these younger folks because again this is not our real this is not our generation like they're not even underground anymore. That's how we used to well, find out about them. They yeah, if they were underground, but a lot of these kids actually know. Like to be honest with you, I didn't know who King Farm was. I, honest, I didn't know who that was either. I honestly didn't never and heard then that Funk Flex knew who he was. I never honestly, I never heard a Pop Smoke song. I'm being honest I with you. Have, I didn't hear about <laughs> Pop Smoke. Uh, I didn't hear about Pop Smoke until uh, my student in class that yeah. morning. I'm like, put phones away. He's like. Miss, you never heard you uh, Pop Smoke died. I said, well, who the heck is Pop Smoke? He's like, you from Brooklyn, you should know. Man, I ain't been in Brooklyn in a couple of years, number one and number two. If he ain't in my age group, I don't know I don't, I'm is. not listening to him. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm not, my mind is not in that. So I, I don't know. And I'm not to say that to disrespect anybody as a person. You know, if I don't know you, I just don't know you. I'm not familiar with your work. You know, so mm-hmm. The point is, is that when these guys die back to back to back to back to back like that, we may not be familiar with their work, but their generation and their their kids, the kids of today, today are actually familiar with it. So why is everybody dying at such a rapid rate? If you really like it, you know how like in our generation, you had a big, you had a pot, these things happen every now and again, because somebody actually tried to point that out to me. It's like, well... A lot of rappers died in your generation too. Scott LaRock. I remember that one. Scott LaRock. But, but I don't see what I'm saying. Like you Scott LaRock, you had what Freaky Ty, Big Pop. Oh yeah, Freaky Ty, that one hurt the most. Um they we had a maybe a handful, but when we say a handful, it wasn't like these guys were getting shot every week. We didn't have mass Or is it because they were not on they weren't they were more out in the open compared to like these other ones who are just really known in their area. Well, I just think too that even no matter, well, cause what pop smoke died in LA, he didn't die in Brooklyn. No, imagine that. So the thing is, is that I think that we moved a lot different in our generation. Whereas we have social media to tell everybody. Where we well, yeah. Social right. media and tell you where you were at. Um, we knew who our circle was. <laughs> you know what I mean? You knew who was the snakes. You knew who wasn't, you knew how to move different. You know, we weren't mm-hmm. out here flossing like, certain times. Especially could, not by ourselves. No, not by yourself. You couldn't go and anybody who was in these videos and stuff that had these big chains and stuff, and they knew that was for a video. You couldn't really go in your neighborhood unless you was good like that to to go out here and wear this stuff and do the things that you do. But I think the generations move different. We, we mm-hmm. had older people to tell us how to move, who did this mm-hmm. before, you know. Whereas this generation, when you look at a little Nas X, when you look at, you know, in fact, I'm going to just throw it out there. When you look at little Nas X, you look at a Cardi B, you look at nobody's telling you this is wrong. You know what I mean? If you doing a lap dance with somebody that's a caricature of the devil, nobody in your circle said, hey, man, I don't care if you're gay, straight, whatever. Nobody in your circle told you that was wrong. No, why would they? But well, that's the thing. That's the thing is that we have a generation of people that could tell you, yo, this was wrong and that was wrong. You know what I mean? These guys don't have that. And then when you do try to tell them, I guess they're not listening. As, it has to be some. So that's the thing. I can't. I can't sit and really place the emphasis on people that need to regulate them, because how do we not know that they haven't? But they just like to hell with you. I'm going to do it anyway. 
I'm going to do it anyway. You understand what I'm saying? But I think we gave this this little nod too much. Um, how much time we gave on this man, on this young man? Uh, too much. But the, the message ain't oh. really about him. It's more or less to the kids, more or less to the adults. More or less of that older generation. We gotta we gotta get a grip on this stuff, people. I mean, we're not gonna catch everybody. We're not gonna catch everything. But for people who see this, and in fact, I mean you don't it, it bothers your soul to look at it, but when you are watching this stuff, break code, forget shaking your behind, forget listening to the beat, forget thinking, oh, he's a star or anybody's a star for that matter. I don't care if it's him, if it's some WAP garbage or something like that. You have to actually look at this stuff as an adult so you can be able to tell the youth this is why this is wrong. I would say regulate, regulate your own affairs. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to save because the world. you got some adults yeah. that's down that enjoy it, too. Right. So if you know that you're a parent where this don't sit well with you, just monitor what your children watch. Please do. Please do. Um, Because. There's others who enjoy it. That's sitting right. Just like how you have parents that smoke weed and drink with their kids. Right. Are they, are they regulators? No, they're not. You know, just govern yourselves, govern your family, govern what your children are watching. And if this is, if this is something you like, just don't put shit and force it on anybody else who's not down with it. That's just my. That's how I look at it. That's how we that's how we view it, I guess. You know, because so. I know we ain't watching that in here. No, definitely we ain't watching not. That in here. Definitely not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's just it's just something that just makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, me neither. You know, and it's disgusting. But like I said, let's stop. He got to He got to deal with that at the end of the day. Yeah. Let's, let's stop dancing. Let's let's start breaking code, folks. We can't. Sit back here and let the kids just because, you know, like you said, and I mean, we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but it's like you said. Once the kids leave your home and they're in the schools and, they you know, they're around their peers and things like that, and especially with the schools making technology so accessible, you know, kids can go to the school and get on YouTube and they can watch these videos and all this stuff like that. We got to instill in them right or wrong. You know what I mean? And if you don't do it, this is what you're going to get. Because to somebody, to somebody, unfortunately, they're looking at this kid and this video and all this, and this is their hero. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't think nothing is wrong with this. This is their hero. And then we also live in a society that's telling you that, you know, pretty much it's such a free thinking society in terms of anything goes. You know, there's no borders on anything. There's no parameters. There's nothing anymore. Like anything goes. You know, this is the stuff that we got to look out for and we got to kind of regulate. So with that being said, Tosh, do you, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to sign off by saying, you know, I, I pray for this kid. You know, I pray for his soul. I pray that, you know, he do better. Somebody come along and teach him better. You know, any closing thoughts on your end? Nah, man, just <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm it, not watching it. No, don't. I mean, I would suggest don't. I mean, I, I saw it. I don't want that image in my head. Well, if your spiritual basis is, is sound enough, then, you know, that stuff won't stand in you. You know, don't let it stand in you. You know what I mean? So with that being said, uh, we're going to sign off on Only One Mike podcast. And, um, you know, we can catch us. I'm sorry. I'm just done found about the whole thing. Uh, you can catch us on Instagram and Twitter at the Only One Mike MP. One and Facebook at the Only One Mike Podcast. Also, you can email us at the Only One Mike Zero Zero at Gmail dot com. Yeah, that, you know what? I'm not even going to put my email. I'm just going to leave everything with with the Only One Mike. You know, trying to no. I mean, this that, is so this is only, no. This is a show. So anything you know, if you want me, Tosh B, Brooklyn Dre, anybody, you can reach us on that Gmail address yeah i think mine's is tosh b <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. it's all going to the same spot and, it sure is yeah it is and in closing i always say speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others even the dull and the ignorant because they too have their story to tell again this is the only one mike podcast signing off peace peace